Hey guys, I'm Orthodon and we are back for Cowboy Bebop Episode 2. Nice, I'm excited to get into more of this. Uh, I'm still kind of trying to learn the world. We have our, like, sci-fi, space, western kind of feel, which is really cool. I've loved the background tracks and, and everything so far. Uh, some of the animation was really good, especially for its time, you know. Um, I thought some of it was actually, like, really damn good, you know? And I, I love watching some of these older shows here and there and, and kind of seeing the differences and in, in everything, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, we have our two characters that seem like they're going to be the through line of the show, Spike and Jet. They're bounty hunters flying on the ship Bebop, so I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about that. And if there's going to be like an overarching story, I'm curious what it's going to be. Do we already know from the last episode and are just like, like we haven't seen enough to tell? Or, or is it more of, like, an episodic, like, go hunt down these, you know, different targets throughout the, uh, throughout the show? Either way, I'm excited just to explore the world more and, and, and get into this some more. So, yeah, let's get started. Oh, I also forgot, last episode in the discussion, I completely forgot to mention the very beginning, uh, where he was, like, it was Spike getting shot a bunch, seemingly, and, like, bleeding all over the place, so... I wonder if that's, like, supposed to be either just, like, a vision or, like, a dream, or if it's actually, like, teasing the end of the show at the beginning. I know sometimes they do that kind of thing, and, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if, uh, if that's gonna be a thing, you know, of, uh, what am I trying to say? Of, like, you know, we had that kind of prophecy of, like, a woman's gonna kill him, or whatever. Is is that gonna be something that comes back, and and we see that beginning scene towards the end of the show, and, and we actually lose Spike as a character? That, I think, could be a, like, a, a, I don't know, we'll have to see. I don't want to say it'd be a bad ending, but, um, because we don't know what leads up to it. So, either way, enough speculating aside, let's get into it, shall we? Alright, we're gonna start here in five, four, three, two, one now right in the opening what a good opening song it's funny because uh I, I watch these YouTubers every now and then, and sometimes I re-watch their playlist of them, them going through a bunch of these, like, different games. And in one of the games, they randomly started singing this Cowboy Bebop intro. And I heard them mention uh, Cowboy Bebop in the episode when they, when they did that singing, but I obviously had never seen it, so I never, like, knew that they were referencing the, the opening. And so now I, now I know. It's always fun when you, like, finally watch something and you get the reference that you heard someone make, like, a while ago, you know? <laughs> Alright. Let's do this. There are some extra characters here in the opening that we haven't seen yet, so we might get a, a bigger cast of, of main characters. Uh, why is that shaking? They're just going to shoot right through the door, aren't they? Oh, they're about to. Shit! What a badass! Why was this case shaking before? Is there something alive inside of it? Interesting. So, are there different like, nations out in space that have their own, like, planets or something entirely? Huh. 
What? Big shot for the bounty hunters. Three hundred thousand, jeez. All right. He looks different. I guess that's why he took the bandages off. Did he change his look? <clears throat> A test animal. Well, that's what's in the case then, probably. Eight million. These guys. Hmm. Oh, who's this? Doctor. Ah, post plastic surgery picture. That's useful. And I was right, he did get plastic surgery. That's why he's taking the bandages off in the bathroom there. Alright. So we have our next target. Abdul Hakim. Hmm. You could fit a small woman inside that? What? Is that what he was talking about? He's a tall man. This guy. He is pushing his luck. Ugh. <laughs> oh my god, force him to drink it. Ugh. Someone trying to take his suitcase. You just saw what this man did. Jesus. Just kick the door down. Why not? Damn, he got away. And whatever animals inside is going to get loose. How did he know the combination? It looked like it needed a combination. Okay, it actually didn't get loose then. I'm surprised. Be like part of the episode was chasing that thing down. <laughs> cool, I can make a water landing. That's neat. Huh. <laughs> I still have no idea if he got the reward money for the last one. <laughs> they, they never mentioned it. Hmm. Oh, this, so this is Mars. Nice. So this is the, like, the higher, like, more luxury planet to live on. They teased that in the last episode. Nunchucks. Mmm.
just go into like a random ass pet shop. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, he thinks that's Hakim. Yeah, he thinks he just got plastic surgery again. Birdies are not happy. How did she know the combination? Oh, it's a corgi. Yeah, that's so rude locking that thing in a damn suitcase. <laughs> There's got to be something about it, right? Well, God damn it, Spike. <laughs> Jesus, just walked right by him. This again. Oh shit! Oh no! Just ruined that lady's business. <laughs> Spike. Jesus. Spike doesn't seem super great at this. Like, every now and then he seems very proficient, and then every now and then he's completely oblivious. So the dog ended up getting loose, just not when I thought it was going to get loose. Or the when I said the animal in the case. I didn't know it was a Welsh corgi at the time. What? Don't throw shit at the dog! That's just rude. Great music. All right. <laughs> Alright, getting some good old fist fighting in. No, doggy! Are they gonna miss? Is Spike gonna miss? Oh shit. Oh my god! Huh! Well. Spike should have the dog now, right? Huh. Aww. Alright, halfway. Cool. Ooh. Nice crack. Hmm. So what's the trick? Why did he have it in a locked case then? Uh, the owner is worth something, okay. It immediately shows us some kids after he said he hates kids. Nice. Oh, it's gonna is it gonna be the guy? Huh. 
What was he doing underwater? For how long? Jeez. This guy's a piece of shit. Hitting kids, throwing shit at dogs. I don't like him. They can kill him. <laughs> uh. Data dog. Oh my god. Now he has a dog and kids to deal with. Okay. So many, like, prophecy things in this show. Okay. Oh no. They're gonna attract like every dog in the neighborhood. I respect you, show, for not playing that, because you can sometimes hear dog whistle sound. Like, some people can. And it's a really high-pitched whine, and I hate the sound. I can hear it every now and then. Uh, or sometimes you hear, like, an altered version, so it makes it audible to, to humans, you know? And, oh, I hate the sound. I was... Ever since they mentioned playing the dog whistle, my first thought was, I hope I don't hear it. Yep, all the dogs are going. Yep. <laughs> Huh! <laughs> you need to pay. I'll pay when I'm rich. Oh no. That poor guy. Well, that's a crazy ass car. Huh! Oh no. Oh, that poor dude just had his wedding ruined. That that priest seemed very unconcerned. He was like, he was like, hey, what are you doing? Not again. This dog's a ninja. Screw you, dude. Knocking out the dog. Oh my god, he's in his ship. Or... Okay, no, that is him. Aww. Huh! Jeez! That's so dangerous! Who's shooting? Oh, these guys. Hmm. 
What is... This dog is incredible. So is their freaking truck that can apparently just do everything. Oh, I hate this episode so much. Poor dog. Oh my god. That's ridiculous. Jeez. Oh my god. That wasn't water. <laughs> Here goes the show again. <laughs> ah, so the data dog is a very intelligent pooch. Okay, that's why it was so smart. And so he got captured. Huh! This lady. So they're just keeping the dog. Jeez. Good luck. All right. And that's it. <laughs> What a, what a silly fun show sometimes, right? This friggin' intelligent dog just running around doing crazy shit. <laughs> oh, man. That was good though. I'm I'm really enjoying this show. It's a lot of fun. Like so far there isn't any overarching story, so it's just like seeing the fun antics that these characters get into. And I wasn't sure from the last episode like how serious I was supposed to take it. Sorry if I was just yelling. I was the, the outro is a little loud for me right now. Um but yeah, I wasn't sure how serious I was supposed to take this show in the first episode, because it definitely had some, like, silly moments, but then I felt like it also had some, like, serious tones to it, too. So, like, when we got into this episode, I was taking it more serious, and then, like, all the goofy stuff started happening, and I was just like, this is ridiculous. All right, so that is it, guys, for episode two of Cowboy Bebop. Once again, the show's a lot of fun. Um, definitely. Now, I I did just mention during the outro that there's there's doesn't seem to be an overarching story yet, but I'm actually curious. What if like I've I've seen this before in some shows where they they throw you a lot of little small things and they eventually lead back to all one source. So what if like maybe. Like the bloody eye from a sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. I was thinking, like, what if the bloody eye from the from the first episode somehow comes into like a story about like the the people that develop the 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 de the bloody eye is the same people that developed like the data dog and and somehow all these little things like come back together, you know? Um, that'd be kind of cool, but. Or it's just a bunch of one-off fun stuff, you know? Either way, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So, uh, so this episode we had a data dog, which is a, a, a dog that is altered, I think, to, to be more intelligent, which is, uh, 
which is pretty interesting. And I like how that kind of explain. I mean, it does explain how the dog did so many like crazy things, like like how like all the dogs were chasing, and that one knew to move out of the way while all the other ones got netted, and then it like went over and like hit all the buttons on the vehicle, and like. I would say it just randomly accidentally hit them, but it looked like it, like, strategically hit them, you know? Like, it looked, like, very targeted and, and stuff like that. Um, so, it, uh, and the dog seemed to be able to tell, you know? Which, granted, that, that's probably not a data dog thing. That's probably just, like, a dog's instinct, you know, of, like, Abdul being kind of a, like, bad person, so he growled at him when he saw him versus like jumping right to uh spike and going with him because he can probably sense that he's a he's a better person you know um so that was pretty that was pretty cool um there wasn't there really wasn't much fighting in this episode it was really just like kind of funny goofy antics going on with like chasing this dog and the the different shenanigans and Spike walking right past his target, or, or Spike thinking that the his target got plastic surgery again, you know, um, but, like, there's a lot of, like, little antics, them, like, you know, following the dog into the river, and, and stuff like that, and, and all that, it was just, a lot of fun little things happened, and, but, like, we did have that one, like, quick fight scene, and then obviously, like, the car chases, and stuff like that, but, um, but yeah, it was it was still a lot of fun. I I really enjoyed it. Like, uh, so we now know that Spike doesn't like animals or children. So, um, a little bit more character development from him. Whereas Jet seems to seem to really get attached to the dog. A, well, a little bit. Like he was petting him and and stuff like that. Where where Spike like didn't even want to be around it. You know. So, a little bit of development there too. Um, but. But yeah, so it was a it was some illegal company that made these these data dogs that sold for a lot of money because I guess rich people want intelligent animals or it's a it's like a hot commodity kind of thing. So that's interesting. I don't I don't know if there's anything more to that that we should look into or think about, but probably something that we should just try to remember for now and in case something comes back with that, you know, later on. Um, but, uh, so many, so many things happened to the dog this episode that just made me, like, feel bad, you know? Like, friggin', for one, it started off being locked in a damn suitcase, like, that, like, when they opened it up, that, he, like, seemed smushed in there, too. It wasn't very big, you know? So that alone is terrible, and I can't believe the thing breathed, like... I'm not taking it too seriously because of the tone of the whole episode was very comical, but just the fact that that random thief stole that suitcase, and then you could see the numbers on it where it looked like you had to, like, input a number and then push the button in because they had to, like, spin it first, right? Yet somehow he knew the combination. Now, the lady, I was thinking, I, I made a joke again about, like, how does this lady know it, you know? But he could have told her off screen what it was, you know? But I still don't know how he stole that suitcase and then knew the code. But I'm not, I'm not worried too much about it. You know, maybe it's maybe it's something I don't understand. Maybe it's not a, like a complex code or, or something. You know, but, um, but either way, it was it was kind of funny to to see that. You know, um, but, but yeah, um, what you call it? Going back to what I was saying, though, all the different times with, like, the, the dog getting, like, knockout sprayed, and I kind of felt bad for that. Granted, that was, you know, just, like, a chemical and not, like, super painful, but I still don't want to see someone freaking knocking out a dog in any sense. The dog jumping out of the car, even though, like, the dog did it itself, you know, I still felt bad for it, because it, like, hit the side of that curb and, like, fell off, like, jeez. Um, and, and just, like, the, the, the various different, like, like, him, like, throwing the shit at the dog and, and all that. I'm just like, leave this poor animal alone! <laughs> but, but, yeah. Obviously, like, obviously, Abdul's a bad dude. He's, you know, he changed his face for that reason. He's, you know, doing, doing criminal shit, you know. I have no problem kicking down doors to bars. Man, this world so far does not like bars. We saw, like, two bars get 
freaking ransacked last episode, and now this one, he walks in there and just, like, causes a commotion and kicks the door out as he leaves. Bars just get no love. That poor, like, side street performer kind of dude doing his, like, little uh, psychic stuff kind of thing, predictions, and uh, and he just, like, runs away and says, I'll pay you when I'm rich, and the guy's like, oh, come on. <laughs> poor dude, just trying to trying to make a living. Um, but, but, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this episode. I'm really enjoying the show. I can't wait to get more into it. Um, like I said, whether it... Whether it remains just an, an episodic fun show to watch, or it develops into an overarching story, either way, I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying even what we just got in the first two episodes, you know? So, yeah. Honestly, I, I don't really have much more to say regarding this one. Um, I can kind of jump through the episode a little bit. I like, I, I did like that they, uh, they kind of telegraphed a lot of, like, the things before they told us, which I feel is, is good storytelling, you know, like, they had the bandages coming off his face before we knew anything about the plastic surgery, so that way when we heard about the plastic surgery, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense, you know, and then we also had the, the suitcase wiggling, which, uh, you know, set up the fact that there was something alive inside, um, so, I always like that when they when they visually show you something before they tell you it, so that way when they tell you it, you can be like, oh, okay, rather than just being like, oh, alright, thanks for telling me, you know, kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah. Also, the little bounty hunter show is kind of fun. Um, I don't think we saw that in the first episode. We saw them get a target, but that was more like a, they kind of like already had the specific name they were looking for, so it's kind of funny, like, so there's... 300,000 bounty hunters in this world, and they, they, they broadcast this show to, to let people know about the, the targets, and I guess, um, seemingly, Spike must be pretty good. Granted, he had that, the doctor guy that gave him info on, on where he went, you know, um, and that was pretty, uh, that was pretty helpful, but, like, you'd think other bounty hunters would have their own information network, too, so does that, is that something where we should be, like, impressed with Spike there, where, like, he actually, if, if 300,000, granted, if there's 300,000 bounty hunters in the world, I'm sure not every single one of them caught that, you know, specific broadcast, but if a good chunk of them did, and Spike was the one to find this guy first, then does that mean that, you know, should I be, res like, I definitely respect Spike as a bounty hunter, but there's definitely some goofy moments that make me go, oh, God damn it, Spike, you know, um, so I wonder, like, even though he has his flaws, is he, like, this, like, really good bounty hunter, you know, uh, like, is he eventually gonna really create a name for himself, or as the show goes on, because he's so good, you know, or is it just dumb luck that he stumbled into a doctor that knew, about the, the plastic surgery and stuff. I don't know. Because we didn't see a single other bounty hunter show up. Unless those two guys that were in the bar were bounty hunters. But it seems like they were just random ass common thieves. So. But who knows. Uh, I did, like, I, I guess I missed it. Maybe I was talking or maybe I just didn't think much of it at the time. But as I was skipping through the episode, I stopped and saw what the... Uh, the base on Mars, I'm guessing this is the Mars one, looks like, and it, it's really cool. Um, so it's not like the whole planet has been terraformed for people to live on it, it's this section of the planet, and it, it looks really nice, like a lot of greenery inside, it's like a, it's like it's inside a crater, with like, it looks like it has its own atmosphere around it, and like a wall around it too. Um, but yeah, it looks like it has its own like atmosphere bubble, kind of around it. And then it has a lot of greenery. It looks like some some nice cities and everything. So that's pretty cool. Um, they they talked about in the last episode how Mars was this like fancy, like that's that's where that girl like dreamed of going. Right was was Mars because that, like they wanted to have enough money to go to Mars because that was like the the high class people. Granted, what we saw here didn't seem super like the high class, but I guess like. I guess, like, every high-class town is gonna have its, like, downtown, sort of, like, slummy feel, I guess, but... But, yeah, that's, uh... 
that's really cool looking. Seeing him, like, fly into it and stuff now. Watching it briefly back. Yeah, that was pretty cool. But yeah, honestly, I think that's all I have to talk about for this episode. Very much enjoyed it, just not too many talking points that seem like are going to stick through the show. Except, oh, I forgot to mention, does that mean the dog is going to stay with them since they have the dog and they didn't resolve that? Does that mean the 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 corgi is just going to be a like permanent companion on uh, aboard their ship now? That'd be kind of cool. Um, I feel like not a lot of shows have like a a dog regularly shown. I don't know if it's like due to like animation constraints or what it is, but I feel like it's very rare for us to regularly see a like a pet in anime, you know. Every now and then, like, some shows will have one shown, like, here and there, you know? I'm not saying it never happens, you know? We had, a uh, what, I guess the first one that comes to my mind is the, uh, in, in, there's a couple of them in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Uh, there's a couple, uh, pet dogs. You don't see them super often, but every now and then they show up. Uh, Riza Hawkeye had one, and then, uh, the grandma that Ed and Al always go back to had one, too. Um, so... But, other than that, I I can't really think of too many other dogs that I feel like are reg like prominently shown in, in anime, you know? But, other than, like, maybe Akamaru from Naruto, I just thought of that one. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, also, corgis are cool. My aunt, uh... My aunt and uncle had one for a while, and they uh, it, it passed away a few years back, unfortunately. But it was pretty old, so um, he was he was called Lightning because uh, you know how they're usually that like you know light tan color with uh, with like white spots on them. Um, it had a white spot that was like a lightning bolt, almost like Harry Potter, like right on its forehead, you know. Um, so they called it lightning and, and stuff like that, and it, uh, unfortunately it passed away, but it was a really cool dog every time we, uh, every time we went over to visit and see, see him and stuff like that, but, uh, but yeah, uh, so, so corgis are, are pretty cool. I don't know a lot of, I shouldn't say that, I know, like, a decent chunk of dog breed names, but there's not many that I could, like, see in an animated kind of way and be like, oh, that's, uh, this kind of dog, you know, but, like, corgis are so, like, stand out, you know, that I, I recognize it immediately, of course, but yeah, fun episode, guys, really enjoying this show, can't wait to watch more, hopefully you enjoyed, if you did, make sure you, uh, hit that subscribe button, also check out my Patreon, this was a Patreon exclusive show, so if you're watching this on, uh, YouTube right now, that means the rest of all of Cowboy Bebop is on my Patreon right now, so in the link, in the description, you can find a link to that, uh, if you want to support me on Patreon and, and get access to that, as well as if uh, other shows. I do multiple Patreon shows at once, so uh, I don't know. At this point, if you're watching this on YouTube, I have no idea what's replacing it. Right now, I'm watching uh, Black Sails and Reincarnated as a Slime Season 2, but both of those are going to be over by the time you're seeing this, so uh, that means I replace those with something else as well. So check all that out in the description if you want. Uh, to see what else I'm watching and, and if it strikes your fancy to uh, to support me there. I very much appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in my future reactions. Bye-bye.